Good morning, mathematicians. Um, today I'm going to be integrating from 0 to pi over 2 natural log of sine of x times natural log of cosine x over tan x. So, seeing all these trig functions, we would like to make some substitution to turn this into something else. And seeing this, we might want to turn this tan x in terms of sine of x and cosine of x to try to get a good du that we can use. So, 1 over tan x is just equal to um, cosine x over sine x because tan x is sine x or cosine x, so 1 over tan x flips that. So this becomes integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine uh, cosine x times natural log of sine x times natural log of, instead of writing cosine x here, I'm going to write square root of 1 minus sine squared x. So of everything in terms of sine and all of this over sine x dx. He's not everything to turn a sine. We can easily just make a u is equal to sine of x. So our du is cosine of x dx. Because now what's going to happen is that this is our du. And then all of this here is going to simplify really nicely. So after substitution, this becomes integral from um, sine of 0 is 0, sine of power 2 is 1, so integral from 0 to 1. Cos of x dx is our du, so this is natural log of u, natural log of square root of 1 minus u squared over sine of, or uh, over u, du. Now at this point, we're going to want to turn this into something a bit more useful. And to do that, I think that we should make a substitution u is equal to e to the v. Because when we do this, this natural log of u is just going to be our v. We're going to get, and this um, 1 over u du is just going to be our dv. So this is really good. So we're going to get du is equal to e to v dv, or 1 over u du is equal to dv. So this makes together integral from well now we have to take the natural log of both of these to get our new bounds and natural log of zero is negative infinity and natural log of one is zero so we have integral from negative infinity zero and so our natural log of u becomes v and now we have natural log of well square root this can be a power of one half and since we can put out our exponents we will just write a one half out here um one minus e to the 2v dv. Okay, so this is very good because this, our natural log, if we differentiate this, this is very nice, and our v, if we integrate this, that becomes nice. So this is a perfect job for integration by bounds. So what we'll get is we'll get 1 half times, so um, integrating we get 1 half v squared natural log of 1 minus e to the 2v evaluate evaluated from negative infinity to zero minus our one half integral from negative infinity to zero of v uh, v squared and this becomes one over one minus e to the two v from differentiating the natural log then multiplied by the derivative of negative e to two one minus e to two v the one goes away so we just get negative two e to the two v dv so this is all well and good because what's really magical here is that this whole thing um, is actually two intermediate forms, one both of them zero times infinity. Because when you plug in zero, you get zero squared, and so this is just zero. But natural log of one minus e zero is not just one, it's just we have natural log of zero, natural log of zero is negative infinity, so you get zero times negative infinity. If you plug in negative infinity, this becomes zero, so the natural log will go one, which is zero, and then infinity just goes to infinity. But since natural log of one minus e to the two u is actually going to grow way faster, and if you want to do this like really formal, you can do L'Hopital's rule. Both times, these are just going to go to zero. So you can try it on your own if you want to do L'Hopital's. So this whole thing is just equal to one fourth integral negative infinity to zero of or we can just do one half because we have our two right there that we can put out. V squared um, it, 
times e to the 2v over 1 minus e to the 2v dv. And this kind of reminds me of something. You, well, we know that by the definition of the gamma function of the, of the um, um, Raymond zeta function in the real line, that a Raymond zeta function of x is equal to 1 over gamma of x times integral from 0 to infinity of u um, to the x minus 1 over e to the x minus 1 dx. Or sorry, e to the u and du. So this will make a function of x. And what's great is that if we multiply, we can get our integral from 0 to infinity of um, u to the x minus 1 over e to the u minus 1 du is equal to our Riemann zeta function times our gamma function. And what's great is that these integrals look very similar. We're just going to want to change them a bit. So first, let's keep it simple and just make the balance the same by making the, fun by making the substitution k is equal to negative v. So dk is equal to negative dv. Let's just pull this in. We'll just use the negative we get to flip the bounds. So we'll get one half integral from zero to infinity of negative v squared that just it becomes k squared. Then e to the negative 2k over 1 minus e to the negative 2k dk. And there's something really great about this. Because now we can just multiply the top and the bottom of our fr fraction by e to the 2k to yield one half integral from 0 to infinity of k squared over e to the 2k minus 1 dk. Because the negative k cancel out. And this is so similar to this. But we have our 2k instead of that. So now we're just going to do our final substitution by being k is equal to um, 2k is equal to our new function, let's call it n. So 2 dk is equal to dn. So now we can divide by 2 to make this 1 fourth integral from 0 to infinity. Because our balance doesn't change because 0 over 2 is 0, infinity over 2 is just infinity. So this becomes n over 2 squared over e to the n minus 1 dn. And now we can pull out the square. We have a 1 fourth. We can make that a 1 16th. We have 1 16th integral from 0 to infinity of n squared over e to the n minus 1 dn. And now this is our function evaluated at 3. So we know that this is equal to 1 16th. We want zeta of 3 gamma of 3. And now our gamma 3 is just 3 minus 1 factorial, so that's just 2 factorial. So this is 2. And this is some weird irrational number. So our whole function evaluates to, sorry about that, to 1 over 8 Raymond zeta of 3. And a Raymond zeta is um, going to be some long irrational number. So this is our most simplified solution. Thanks for watching.